Okay, so the next segment on information retrieval has to deal with evaluation of information retrieval systems. It's very important to evaluate search engines because it's very difficult to compare them just purely based on anecdotal evidence. So some of the metrics that are used to evaluate information retrieval systems include the size of the index. So large engines like Bing and Google would get a high score on this criterion. Speed of indexing is also very important. We want whenever there's a change in a document to be indexed and added to the index as quickly as possible. Speed of retrieval is also very important. Users typically don't want to wait more than a fraction of a second to get their hits. Accuracy is very important. Do we uh, provide the correct answers to the user's queries? Timeliness, uh, do we index the most up-to-date versions of documents so that whenever a user wants to find out what happened just now, we don't want to show them older versions of the documents. Ease of use is, of course, also very important. How easy is it to formulate a query, to revise a query, and so on. And another important criterion is expressiveness of the search language. Does it allow natural language questions? Does it allow uh, searching for phrases, for words that appear together in the same sentence, uh, words in different languages, and, and alternatives, and so on? So let me show you something called the contingency table that is used uh, very often in information retrieval evaluation and also in many other tasks, including uh, question answering and summarization, as we have seen in some other sections of the class. So the contingency table has four cells. In the first column, we represent the number of documents that were retrieved by the information retrieval system given the query. In the second column, we show the documents that were not retrieved by the system. The first row includes the documents that are actually relevant to the query, and the second row is the ones that are not relevant to the query. So the sum of the numbers in those four cells is equal to the number of documents in the entire collection. So W is the number of true positives. So those are the documents that were retrieved by the system and that are also relevant to the user's query. Z, or the number of true negatives, is the number of documents that were not retrieved by the system, but were also not supposed to be retrieved because they're not relevant to the user query. So W and Z obviously are good things. We want a system to have good values, high values for W and Z. In the other diagonal, we have X equals the false negatives. So those are the documents that were not retrieved by the system, but they were supposed to be retrieved, so they're misses. And we also have similarly y, which is equal to the number of false positives. So those are the documents that were not supposed to be retrieved, but the system returned incorrectly. So n2 is the sum of w plus y. This is the total number of retrieved documents. n1 is w plus x, so the number of relevant documents. And n with the number of uh, all the documents in the collection, w plus x plus y plus z. So just like in uh, text summarization, we can define precision and recall. Recall is uh, W divided by W plus X, and precision is W divided by W plus Y. And just to refresh your memories, recall means that uh, recall is going to be high if the system returns as relevant most of the actual documents that are relevant. And precision is going to be high if uh, almost all of the documents returned by the system are indeed relevant. Okay, let's look at some of the issues involved in evaluating information retrieval systems. So one thing that can easily cross one's mind is why not just use accuracy as the evaluation metric? Accuracy would be the sum of the two good values, W, the number of two positives, and Z, the number of two negatives, obviously normalized by N. So one problem with this is that in a typical case, uh, the value of Z is much larger than the value of W. So it's completely possible to get an accuracy of 99.5% or even higher even if W itself is zero or close to zero, which is obviously not something that we want. We don't want to emphasize uh, true negatives over true positives. So one other issue is how to represent, or how to report rather, uh, the performance of a system over a large number of queries. Well, this is typically done just by averaging the precision over all the possible queries given in the evaluation. Another thing that is typically done is uh, to report the value at which precision is equal to recall. And this is done so that uh, the system doesn't artificially inflate P at the expense of R or vice versa. And finally, one other metric that is used uh, to report a single number uh, for evaluation is the F measure, it's, which represents a weighted combination of precision and recall. Uh, in practice, what is more commonly used is the F1 measure, 
which is uh, 2 divided by the sum of the reciprocals of recall and precision, or in other words, the harmonic mean of precision and recall. So very often in research papers, will you see uh, F1 measures reported as single metrics. So now the next slide is going to show us a sample TREC query. So you're going to ask me, what is TREC? So TREC is the Text Retrieval Evaluation Conference, which has been organized annually by the National Institutes of Standards and Technology in the United States. So it uh, provides systems with this collection of documents and also a collection of queries that have uh, three different sections. So here's an example of those. Uh, the three sections are the title, the description, and the narrative. So the title for this example is Most Dangerous Vehicles. The description is which are the most crash-worthy and least crash-worthy passenger vehicles. And then there is a narrative. So the systems that participate in this evaluation are supposed to use one, two, or all three of those uh, fields and return in each of those settings the most relevant documents in the collection. So this example here, uh, the IDs on the right represent the documents that have been considered to be relevant to the query uh, by human annotators. And here's what the document typically looks like in track. It's uh, marked up in SGML or XML more recently, and it contains a uh, markup for uh, metadata such as headline, length, and date, and then each of the paragraphs is marked appropriately. So if you're interested in the track evaluation, you can go to the NIST website and find all the different tracks that have been uh, uh, used in the different years. And there is a set of presentations that shows how the different systems compare with one another. So in addition to the track evaluation corpus, people have used other reference collections for information retrieval. So for generic retrieval, they include things like the OHSU MED, which is a collection of medical documents, Cranfield and CACM, which includes things like manuals and also other types of scientific papers. For text classification, which is one of the topics that we're going to look at a little bit later, uh, people use the Reuters collection and the 20 News Groups collection. For question answering, they use the Tech question answering collection. For web retrieval, they use .gov or WT100G, which the first one being a, a call of the entire .gov domain. Uh, and the second one being a 100 gigabyte uh, collection of the web corpus. And for blog purposes, people use many different data sets, including the buzz metrics data sets. And uh, the, finally, for ad hoc information retrieval or document retrieval, people use the track collections, which are relatively small in size, two to six gigabytes. For the web, they use the track web collections, which have a lot more data. So now let's see how we can compare the performance of two systems. Suppose that one system gives you an F measure of 60% and another one gives you an F measure of 65%. Can you claim that the second system is better? So we clearly cannot do this over one query because given a single query, it's completely possible that one of the systems just happens to do a really good job and the other one can fail. So instead, what we need to do is to find the average performance over many different queries. But one thing that we can do even better is uh, to make sure that on every query, one of the system outperforms, one of the systems, sorry, outperforms the other one. Okay, so one of the common uh, methods that is used to find out which system is better than another is the so-called sign test. This is a technique that comes from the statistics community and is based on the principle of hypothesis testing. So we have two systems and each of the systems is run on a number of queries and we have collected uh, the performance on each of those queries. And we want to compare how many times system A outperforms system B, how many times they got the same performance, and how many times B outperformed A. So in statistical hypothesis testing, we have the so-called null hypothesis that says that the two systems are equally good. And based on the data that we have observed, we want to find out the probability that the null hypothesis is rejected. So that means that uh, system A is actually better than system B. So if we plug in those numbers into a sign test calculator, we're going to see that the probability in this case is about 3.5%, which means that it's very unlikely that the two systems are equally good. And we have to reject the null hypothesis and assume that A is better than B. In another example, we have A better than B 18 times and B better than A nine times. So in this case, the ratio is much uh, smaller between the two categories. So if we plug in those numbers uh, into the calculator, we'll see that the probability is 12%. So that means that 
We don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis and therefore we cannot claim that system A is better than system B. So very, it's very important when you write a research paper in information retrieval to include statistical significance tests like this so that you can actually validate your claim that your system is superior. Uh, here's an external link to an actual sign test calculator uh, that you can use uh, in your own experiments. There are some other tests that are used, uh, some of which don't just look at the sign of the difference between the two systems, so which one is better, but they actually look at the difference of the values of the two systems. So one of that, those tests is the so-called t-test or student t-test. And here's another calculator that corresponds to that test. Another test that is used a lot in the information retrieval is the so-called Wilcoxon matched pair sign ranks test. And I'm including here a link to a calculator for it too. So this concludes the section on evaluation of information retrieval systems.